You know, honestly, after having run my own e-commerce brands for the past five years now, I can confidently say one thing. Products pretty much determine everything when it comes to scale with Google Ads. Have the right kind of products and you can actually achieve tremendous amounts of scale long term that basically no other platform can provide. But on the other side of the spectrum, have the wrong product and no matter how much money, how much time, how much energy you put into your Google Ads campaigns, nothing is just gonna work. And in this video, I want to go over the exact criteria that makes products even scale in the first place when it comes to Google Ads. And it's like I have always said this, it does not matter how quirky or how innovative or how cool your product is. What actually matters is how many people actually want it. And the reason why I even say this is because there have been a lot of times on my own e-commerce brand where I've been able to scale simple products, everyday products like lawnmowers, like chainsaws, and so many other quote boring products for six figures, even almost seven figures in revenue. So it really doesn't matter what the quality itself of that product is in terms of how cool it is, how new it is, all of that stuff. This is where so many e-commerce store owners get completely caught up and they just derail and go down the wrong path, focusing on the wrong things. Instead, all of your effort should be focused on finding those products or adding those products to your e-commerce brand, which people or your customers actively search for. And there's a few criteria actually that makes a product potentially even scalable with Google Ads. Basically, the first criteria is search volume. Now, you see right here on my screen, I have the Google Keyword Planner tool pulled up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and change the location, first of all, to United States, because we're gonna assume your e-commerce brand is within the US, but you can change the country and target your main target location as you see fit. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in one of my favorite examples of 3D printers, because for some reason I still have not found out to this day, I'm addicted to 3D printers, that's why they're in every single one of my videos. But what I want to do is I want to look at the overall search volume right here, because this is one of the main contributing factors to scale when it comes to Google Ads. Let's just say without this factor right here, there is no scale, there is nothing when it comes to Google Ads for your e-commerce brand. So you need to make sure there is search volume with Google before you decide to source a product or spend your money on it. But exactly what is the right criteria? So I like to personally look at the specific total search volume. So it's this top number right here. And I like to ensure for the products I'm sourcing, for the products I'm looking to test with Google, there's more than 30,000 to 40,000 active monthly searches in total. So this number, it should be well above 30,000, well above 40,000. Now here for 3D printer, it's 1.5 million, which, you know, it's kind of not surprising because the 3D printer niche itself, it's a multi, multi million dollar niche on its own. So it really doesn't surprise me that there's 1.5 million people searching for 3D printers in the low months and in the high months, especially during December, it almost doubles to roughly 2.6 million. Now, if we change the it from Google to just Google and search partners, you can see it goes all the way up to 3.5 million. So Google and search partners is if you are also targeting those different types of search partner networks and all of that stuff. But we're gonna stick to Google for this example. So that is one of the main criteria when it comes to determining if the products you are currently selling are even scalable with Google Ads. And honestly speaking, these are the kinds of products that scale the most with Google. Those with a very high search volume. I mean, 30,000 to 40,000, Think of that as a minimum number. You always want to be aiming well above that, but that's just one of the criteria. The next criteria is the product itself should be in the season right now. Not two months from now, not two months before now, right now in the present. And the best way to look at that is first of all, look at the ongoing trend within the last three months. So it looks like the trend went down from December to January for 3D printers. But then in February, it was the lowest point because March, it increased by 14%. So that's obviously a positive incline upwards, which is a good sign. But I do like to also change the time range here to last 24 months to see how the trend has been during this time period 
in the previous months as well. So I'm recording this video in April. If I go ahead and look at April of 2021, it looks like from April to May, there was a very slight decrease. And then to June, there was even a bigger decrease before it started to go back up until December. And it looks like the same kind of trend followed in April of 2022. It went down until June. And then from June all the way up to December, it started to go up gradually. So we can safely assume it's gonna be following the same exact trend this month this gives us a lot of information right here because it lets us know that maybe right now not is not the best time to go out and try all these different strategies to try scaling the product at maximum level simply because the overall trend itself which kind of equals the market demand for that product it's also starting to go down maybe there's a little bit of decrease in terms of how many people are even wanting to purchase it in the first place so with any type of decrease in the trend in terms of search volume you want to kind of just assume in that sense the sales might have also decreased as well so keeping that in mind we don't want to try something too crazy we want to stick to strategies that are working but if it's a brand new product then you want to gradually start testing that product with proper google ad strategies without really just jumping in and pushing extremely high budget so you want to leave the high budget testing high budget scaling for the month where it's actually in the season right now so if i were personally selling 3d printers i would start to kind of heavily go into 3d printers start to heavily test them scale them so on and so forth starting maybe july or even august that looks like it's the perfect time for this product but that is one of the kind of determining factors of what product scale with google ads it's basically if it's in the trend at this given period of time because i mean just to give you another example with air conditioners obviously there's a lot of best-selling air conditioners out there there's multi-million dollar stores that sell air conditioners but here's the thing it does not matter how much of your air conditioner sold last summer because if you try to sell your air conditioner that same one which was a best-selling product just a few months ago it's gonna completely fail it's not gonna work for you and i know this this because I tried exactly this with the air conditioners I used to sell previously I had a winning air conditioner different units sell extremely well during April all the way up to July August and starting September things just died off literally overnight that, that was without any changes to the ad strategy so in terms of what skills the most you really want to make sure that you are trying to source products trying to sell products in the season right now so because this trend starts to go up right now it might be in the season to sell an air conditioner right now but that's just one of the many criteria you want to be looking at the next criteria that i look at is the year over year change this is a, one of the newer metrics i've started looking at in terms of figuring out if some of my products are going to scale with google ads or if they're not going to scale and that is basically what is the year over year change so the three month change it's basically 82 percent positive which is a very good sign and it's sort of expected because during this time period this is when there's the biggest drop in terms of the changes and those are basically negative changes right here so what we want to do is we want to look at both of these metrics but of course look at the year over year change a bit more because that lets you know how that keyword is doing year over year like for example it says this keyword right here portable air conditioner it's down minus 45 percent year over year and that makes sense because last year during this time period it was already at 450,000 average monthly searches whereas this year so far in march it looks like it's way less than that which can basically describe why there's such a drastic change in terms of the year over year change however in the last three months things are looking very positive for this keyword itself it's basically 123 percent on the rise upwards compared to the previous last three months which is again expected because the last three months before these previous three months have been all winter months right here so that explains the change right here but ideally you definitely want to be looking at the year over year change but for seasonal products it might make sense to look at this three month change right here because almost all of these specific keywords are all positive which is a very good sign but and this can kind of change for depending on the product you're looking at for example if we look at a portable bat sub for just the sake of this example we can see these numbers can be drastically similar to each other on the specific products which are more consistent with each other so here there's not really a too big of a decrease downwards nor is there too big of an increase upwards and we can see these numbers are basically identical almost to each other of course there are certain scenarios where it's not and these are the kinds of keywords 
you definitely want to be using. So even though the three month change is not really positive, the year over year change is good, which means there is an upward increase in the overall demand. And you don't want to just look at this at one keyword. You want to look at this across multiple different keywords and essentially get like an average number for all of these combined, because that's gonna let you know if the product you're trying to sell, it's really gonna be the product that scales with Google Ads or not. Or if you're already selling something with Google Ads, you're having very difficult time scaling with Google, then this number right here will probably tell you if it's the product that's the issue, or if it's the niche that's the issue, or if it's the strategy that's the issue. And this is, by the way, the same thing we do with our e-commerce clients under my Google Ads agency, Your Marketing. which if you're currently doing $40,000 or more per month in revenue, you need just a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brand to the next level. Go to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can potentially work together and make that happen. But this brings me to the next kind of scenario or criteria I look at to understand what kind of products that I have on my e-commerce brand are gonna scale the most and what should I allocate more of my budget to. And that has to do with competition itself. So I've opened up another Google search tab here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna search up for the product portable fast sub right here because we want to understand basically this next criteria which relates to competition now competition really believe it or not determines if your product is going to be scalable or not with google ads and the criteria i like to look at is i don't want any other competitors selling the product i'm trying to sell the most or at least the same exact product with more than four to five different listings here so what I mean by that is if my product right here is this one right here with this style, I see Wayfair here trying to sell my product that's one competitor, I should not see more than two to three other competitors trying to sell that same exact design. And it looks like Alibaba also has a very similar design, so that's already two. And this one right here, Amazon, seems to be selling a very similar design, so that's already three. If I find one to two more, then I probably will not allocate a lot of my budget to this product and that's because the number of competitors as they increase the lower your chances of scaling your product with google ads regardless of how much search volume there is and that's just because all of these competitors they're trying to fight for the pieces of the pie and you don't want small pieces of the pie you would rather get the whole pie so really to be profitable and to scale properly with google you want to ideally be aiming at three to four competitors or less that are selling the same exact product as you. That's one of the main criteria that determines if your product is scalable or not. But the next criteria then relates to pricing itself. Now, in terms of the pricing, I always say, even in my other videos, be the average of your top five competitors. Don't be the cheapest like Amazon is right here. And don't be the most expensive, which is what Plunge is doing right here, selling their bathtub, which is a cold plunge bathtub for almost seven thousand dollars you don't want to do that if you really want to scale your products to the next level profitably with google ads instead it's always best to have a good pricing structure that kind of is between your topmost competitor and your least expensive competitor it's good to be average in terms of the pricing but it's not good to be average when it comes to the overall approach for your ad itself which is the next criteria of whether you're going to scale that specific product you want to scale with google ads or not and in terms of your approach with google ads your shopping ad strategy it has to do with your image it has to do with the seo for your product titles it has to do with what kinds of promotions you're applying here like reviews or promo codes all of these things you want to always find a way to be different like for example even though plunge is the most expensive they found a way to be different by having reviews here that's one of the most differentiating factors for them compared to all of these competitors right here but you should not be stopping at that because there's a lot of different things you could be doing you could be adding different kinds of promo codes you could be having promo codes like these ones right here where it's 16 dollars off every order that's 169 dollars plus this is a unique promo code none of these competitors have it this is the kind of approach you want to be taking with shopping at least to really stand out from your competitors and when you do this this is what really determines if your product or products can be scaled with google ads it's after a certain point not really related to the product itself but rather how you kind of showcase that product what's the perceived value of that product so on and so forth all of these things help you stand out but 
kind of to recap what we went over things like the search volume things like the overall competition for that product the overall pricing structure the approach of your shopping ads all these things determine how much skill and whether your products can even be scaled or not in the first place but again when you keep track of these things you know exactly which products should be your leading products where you should allocate more of your google ads budget to and what should kind of be running in the background maybe more as upsells downsells all of that stuff because again not every product should be advertised on google ads especially if you want to scale that specific product to the next level but if you're doing forty thousand dollars or more per month in revenue you need just a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brand to the next level go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can potentially work together and make that happen but i want you to watch this video right here on my newest google shopping ad strategy for 2023 and onwards to scale your brand to six seven even eight figures